We're going to rise. We're not bound. In the spirit, you're not bound. You're free. Okay. The only time you can get yourself that way is if you let the flesh bind you. And we all fight that anyway. Paul said that that what I would do, I do not. That which I would not, that I do. Oh, wretched man that I am. And this was an apostle of the Lord. He said, but who shall deliver me from this body of death? He said, you know. And he said, but I thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Because where sin abounds, grace much, much more abounds. Amen. And so we are conquerors. We're more than conquerors yes. through Christ that strengthens us. Yes. Paul also said that when, you be, when we were a child, we spake as a child. We thought as a child. We even acted like children. But when we become a man, we put away the childish things. Amen. And so that means there has to be some spiritual maturity if we're going to make it to heaven. You're saved by grace through faith. But James says, faith without works is dead. So there has to be a fruit, bearing fruit, which is love, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Not the works of the flesh, as it says in Galatians. Because those things will only bring about evil. And they'll only bring about destruction. But if we are serving the Lord, and we truly are trying our best to serve the Lord. Out of our spirit and out of our life will flow the love of God. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. amen. And it's beautiful too. It's a beautiful thing. Can you say amen? amen. If you go into the book of uh, Luke chapter 16, praise the Lord. We can take a, uh, take a peek at this. I was thinking about the two weeks ago when I was here. Dad was preaching on the rich man and Lazarus. And... Uh, so then we follow up with the judgment of the lake of fire in the book of Revelation. It talks about the books. And so what happens is we have to sometimes ask ourselves, what books is he talking about? He says, for the book was open and then another book was open, which is the Lamb's Book of Life. But there were books that were open. Matter of fact, if you read your Bible, you'll find there's five books in heaven, at least, that uh, God is either recording things or keeping things. Uh, read there, and we'll be judged according to the things written in the books or according to our works. So we have, as Christians, we have responsibility to mature as a Christian. Amen. And you're not going to get there overnight. And even if you've been saved as long as Rosie and Sco, there you go. We still have some room to grow. Can you say amen? amen. All right. Amen. So here's what happened. Let's go, if you will, Luke chapter 15. Let's go to Luke 15. A familiar scripture, I'm sure, that everyone has probably read a million times and have heard it preached a hundred different ways, all of which I'm sure is good. And another way to look at this, this uh, story of the prodigal son is to look at the what got him in the trouble to begin with. What got him so off track? He was living in the father's house. The blessings were everywhere. He, he could see the, uh, the anointing, the blessing that was upon the Father's kingdom, of which he was a part of. Even the servants that were there were blessed. I put it this way. You take it like, take it like our church, for instance. It's, a, it's part of the kingdom of God. Okay? Because the Bible says the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. And even the people that we work with, uh, even that maybe don't attend here, just... Whether it's uh, you know somebody we hire for moving the snow or somebody who you know fixes something you know even they are blessed if they are in the if they come around the kingdom of God. The Bible says you as a Christian you can lay hand whatever you put your hands to it shall prosper. Amen. So in other words, because you are saved, that love and that power is radiating to everybody you come around. I mean, they're just they're going to get blessed whether they like it or not. Okay, but, but then, you know, and maybe they're saying, oh, no, that's that church lady. All she ever does is preach at me and tell me how I need Jesus. But because they're still dealing with you, God is still going to give them a little splash or a little blessing. Maybe not in salvation until they come to Jesus Christ, but there's still there's something about you as a Christian that they like being around. Can you say amen? amen. People love to be around those that have the joy of the Lord. 
And the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Can somebody help me preach today? Amen. So what got, what got this guy in such a bad shape? Well, let's see what it says. A certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. I was reading that a few days ago, and the Lord just, it just jumped off the page. And the Lord said, he had everything. He's in the kingdom. Everything is already there for him. Why would you be so arrogant to walk up to the Father and say, give me mine that I deserve? That was the first thing that got him way off track. Because he thought he deserved it. He thought he deserved that that was his deal. And that it was his situation. And that he was going to be the one that was in control of his own destiny. Instead of being happy about being in the kingdom where everything was at his disposal. Amen. I mean, the benefits are out of this world if you're saved. You can't get off track unless you get in a selfish condition. And we already know what happens then. And so we, we don't even have to talk about the hog pen here. I don't even have to take you down to the swine. We don't even have to get into the brightest living if you don't want to. Because when you address the Father and say, I deserve this. Or if you deserve that. And you don't understand that you've already been blessed by the Lord. Then you've already got yourself off track. Come on, somebody help me preach. We've been in the Christianity for a long time time serving the Lord and we understand all of us have maturity moments times that we say wow man I missed that bad I'm God thank you for showing me that and we pick ourselves we, we repent of ourselves we repent we repent to God we say God help me and we pick ourselves up we start doing the right thing that's what true repentance is Amen. repentance is when you call upon the Lord and you say father I messed up on this and I'm I need you to forgive me and he's already there I'm talking about the love of father won't cast you out, praise the Lord. But he'll receive you unto, his, unto himself. So let's see what it says here. So the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. Here's another thing. If you go back under the law, he didn't have anything that fell to him. He's the younger son. It's the older son that receives the blessing from the father. So he's already off track because he's saying, give me my portion that belongs to me when it didn't belong to him in the first place. Amen. He was already stepping outside of the law. He was already getting out of fellowship with the father and the brother. He was already getting himself outside of the will of God. And so God could, you know, here you imagine the father thinking, what are you talking about? Your portion. What are you discussing with me? Are you talking, do you want me to give you your brother's birthright? I can't do that under the law. I've got to give it to the older son. Somebody help me preach. Some, I've had people say, I, I want to have, I wish I had that other person's blessing. You don't want the other guy's blessing. You want your own in Jesus' name. You don't need somebody else's thought. You don't need somebody else's anointing. You don't need somebody else's gift. You need what God has given you. Okay, so we're, all, we're way off track here. This guy's way off track. And he's not even left the father's house. He's still in the house and he's off track. He's sitting right there with the anointing everywhere. But he's got himself in a condition to where he can no longer hear from the father. The voice that he's hearing is no longer coming from heaven. But it's coming somewhere within. And maybe Lucifer is sneaking in and trying to work him over and get him off track. And tell him, again, pride rises up. And he believes that he deserves. And then he says to the father, give me my portion of uh, that befalleth to me. And the Bible says, and he the father... And he divided unto them his living. So the father did. Sort of like when the children of Israel were saying, we want meat, we want meat. We don't, we're tired of the manna. Give us meat. So the Lord said, all right, I'll send you quail. I'll send you so much you would be up to your knees. The Bible says they couldn't even finish picking it out of their teeth. There was so much. They were foundering on it. Have you ever foundered on anything? They were foundering on it. The Lord will give you what you want, but you may not want what you get. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because a lot of times what we do is we, we, we try to pick and choose how God would use us or how God would want to, how we can receive from God. Instead of saying, Lord, here am I. It's not my brother, it's not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Praise God. 
I mean, and when we get in that condition, then God is able to speak to our hearts. When we get into that humble anointing, the Bible says, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. Can you say amen? amen. All right, so the son says, give me my portion, and it says, and, not, and he divided unto them his living, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, and he took a journey into a far country, and there he wasted his substance, or his anointing, or his blessing on righteous living. He was already in trouble before he ever left the house. He was already in trouble before he ever left the house. And so today, I know in Christianity, we have to all take an ex uh, examination of our lives. We do this at communion all the time. But Paul said, uh, I die daily. And Jesus says, take up your cross daily and follow me. In other words, we all need the Lord. And we can't make another step without him. We cannot, we cannot serve the Lord without the Holy Ghost. We cannot receive anything from God without the Lord. We, we have to have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in our lives. And you can't have just part salvation. We're not part-time Christians. We're not just saved on Sunday morning. Live like the devil all week. And you don't have to get out here and get drunk and carouse around to be living like the devil, folks. You can do it right there in the Father's house. You just got to get your heart in the right condition. Does anybody want to help me preach? If you read the book of James, it will tell you there are so many things that cause people to lose the anointing in their life. So many things. So many destructive things. And then even the Bible talks about it's like a fire set on the nature of hell. The little tongue, it's not a very big member, but it can do a lot of damage. Praise God that we have overcome sin through the blood of Jesus Christ. And so when you get set free, out of your mouth should flow rivers of li living water. But the Bible tells us that out of your mouth cannot, you cannot eat off the Lord's table and the table of devils. You cannot... Uh, uh, Blessings and cursings cannot come forth from the same place. Of fresh water or sweet water and bitter water don't flow out of the same fountain. You've either got God or you don't have Him. Praise the Lord. You're either saved or you're lost. And if we get ourselves out of condition with God, here's what I love about the story. Even if we get ourselves out of whack, even if we get ourselves a little bit off track, even if we mess up, and we even get ourselves out there too far. I'm glad there's love from the Father. Yeah. Can you say amen? amen? There's love. Anybody know what I'm preaching about? Because when every, every one of us have done it sometime or another in our lives. And that is, we've said, wow, I really am off track. Yeah. Maybe it's not no, no big sin. I mean, you're not out here robbing the bank. You're not burning down the city of Knox. You know, you're not doing, you know, you haven't plotted to kill somebody. But, you know, you can get yourself off track. And if you do, here's what happens. Then you get into the playground of the devil. And then every unevil work, every evil thing will come to creep your door. And so what happens is what you have to do is say, wait a minute. I want to I get things with me and God. You know, are we all right, God? That's, what, that's one of the things I do. God, yeah, but we all right here. Amen. Praise God. And amen. And so when you get things right with God, then God will get things right with you. Yeah. And you say amen. amen. And then, because his love is everlasting. His love endureth forever. His love will cover a multitude of sins. It's His love for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through Him might be saved. This week, Dad, as you see, we've had people, I mean, 20 and 30 and whatever, I don't even remember how many folks getting saved online. Unbelievable. Unbelievably, folks are coming to Christ. Folks are coming. You guys saw this at the uh, uh, Three Days of Glory. People came from all over. Summer fire was crazy. People came from all over. Here's what happened. Folks are getting saved. There's a great harvest going on. I found out there's people getting saved in Kenya right now. There's a revival there. It's so huge. It's massive. I mean, they're talking 100, 200,000 people gathering outside, coming to Jesus Christ. In Bangladesh, there's been 91 thousand Buddhists who have come to Jesus Christ. Oh, praise God. There's something happening in the last day. The blessings all around us. The anointing of God is everywhere. His goodness endureth forever. Oh, praise the Lord. But 
if we we have to make sure we don't get in the condition uh, that gets us uh, to where we're looking for a far country. Yeah, that's right. And now this guy's not the only one in trouble here. Right. We got another son. Uh -huh. The one that stayed home. Yeah. The one that stayed home. Oh, my pastor, he didn't have no problems, right? I mean, it was his brother that went and went out there and wasted the blessing and, yeah. and ended up in the hog pen and would have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and he joined himself a citizen of that country. He, he backslid about as far as you can go. He had completely got out of the will of God. And yet he came to himself, the Bible says. He came to himself and he said, In my father's house there are uh, my, his servants have bread enough to spare. And I hunger here in this, in this land. And he says to himself, he came to himself and said, I know what I'll do. I'll go back to the Father. Praise God. I'll go back to where the blessing is. I'll go back to where I once had the saw the light. I'll go back to where I was as fresh and clean as a newborn baby. I'll go back to the kingdom of God. And then he said, and I'll tell my father, Father, I've sinned and I'm before you, before heaven and you. And I'm not worthy to be called your son. Listen, praise God. Something about repentance. When people really get things right with God, they humble before God. They come to Him and they realize the spiritual condition they're in. And they say, Father, forgive me. They, and when they do this, that's the moment. That's the absolute moment when the Lord says, oh, here comes the love of the Father. Sister, praise God. And He says, He's the old man that's standing at the end of the drive looking every morning for His Son to come home. And glory to God, I can see the very moment when he saw this frail figure of a man walking up. Praise the Lord. Glory. He had to stand and look at him a little while. He didn't recognize him. This wasn't the same boy that had left home. But glory to God. When he saw his expression, when he saw his repentance, when he saw his sorrow, then the Bible says that he ran toward him and he hugged him and he kissed him and he said this is my son that was dead but he's alive again somebody get a ring to put on his finger get some new shoes to put on his feet get the best robe in the kingdom go get the fatted calf we're going to make merry and we're going to celebrate his return and listen folks it's it's the greatest thing in the world how god's mercy when we don't deserve it he we still will give it to us when we don't deserve it he'll still help us out of it when i've got myself in a mess a time or two have you guys a praise the lord i'm so glad that when i shouldn't have been i should have been left out there it should have been over he said, I'll never leave you. I said, I'll never forsake you. But I'm going to away. Even in the world. Now there's another son also who never left home. Never demanded anything. Just stayed there. Took care of the things that he was required to do. You know, spiritual tests come to every one of us. Spiritual tests will come to every one of us. A test. This is only a test. Had this been real, you'd have known about it. Okay? <laughs> Whenever these tests come on your faith, they will try your faith. And a lot of times we think that means something tragic happens in our lives. Something, you know, something really bad. That, that's, that can be a test, absolutely. That can be a serious test. Death in the family, sickness, all, all kinds of things. Financial hardship, all kinds of things. But when you get a test that you don't know is coming, when you're Job, and you don't know the conversation between God and the devil. You don't know that they just talked over the fact. When the sons of God had come before the Lord, and the, and the Lord looked and saw that Lucifer was present and said, Hey, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him on the earth. <laughs> and the devil said, That's because you won't, you know. You've got a hedge around him. I can't get to him. Right. You've got this blessing around him, which I know your word says you can. Uh -huh. But if you just let, lift that off him and let me get a hold of him, he'll curse you to your faith. Here's when the test comes. Uh -huh. Whenever the challenge comes, what are you going to do with your Christianity? 
Are you going to still love Jesus? Yes. Are you still going to keep going? Are you still going to have the Spirit of the Lord and the love of God? Yes. This is the test. Yes. And so here's Job. All of a sudden, the, the, everything is being stolen from him. His cattle, his sheep, his camel, everything he owns. Bandits are coming from the left and the, and the right. And then a storm comes and kills his family. And, and, and everything's falling apart. And then all of a sudden the devil shows up again at the conversation of God. And says, and God turns to him and says, hey, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him in the world. He says, that's because I can't touch him. You, a skin for skin, what would a man give for his life? And so he said, you let me have him. You let me get a hold of him. You let me afflict him. And he will curse you. And God said, all right, but you can't kill him. And so all of a sudden, boils from the top of his head to the soles of his feet begin to manifest upon Job's life. And he's in a miserable condition. He's broke, busted, and now disgusted. It's about over. And so his, even his wife, who's been so faithful, and she loves him, but she's to the point where she's thinking, why is he still praising the Lord? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're in bad shape here, and this man is still sitting here praising the Lord. I understand he loves the Lord. I love the Lord too, but come on. And it's a test for her as well. And so Job then uh, it says to her, you know, look, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He refuses to surrender to the test of the devil. He still don't know why. Because he, he's been blessed his whole life. He don't understand. He hadn't done anything wrong. The Bible said in all this. Job never sinned or charged God foolishly. Never. Yet he can't understand. Why he's going through what he's going through. But praise the Lord. Uh, even three of his so called brethren show up. To tell him how bad of a sinner he is. And that God is putting this judgment upon him. That he must have failed God. And through it all. Job stays faithful and he never he never blames God nor charges God foolishly can somebody say amen I mean I don't know I don't know how he did it but he did it by faith that's exactly how he did it he just kept believing that the God that had blessed him before is surely not forsaken me and he will bless me again I don't know about you but I've been up and I've been down and I've been up and been down and I'm telling you right now, I'm glad the Lord has always been with me through it all. The other night in the car hit me. I'd never seen a guy coming. I didn't even know he was coming. It came out of nowhere. He hit me at over 60 miles an hour. Boom. He spun me around till I was going the opposite direction down the wrong road from where I was headed. I was kind of jarred a little bit and couldn't. I didn't realize what had happened. I didn't know if I did something wrong or someone else. I even asked the witnesses that came to the window. I said, what happened? They said, this guy just plowed through the red light. I said, did I? Who, what happened? Did I do it? Or, I didn't know who hit me. I didn't know who hit me. Praise the Lord. And as I was sitting there trying to gather my bearings, you know what I'm saying? Gather, so, <laughs> gathering your bearings. I felt like I'd been hit, you know, like jarred. Uh, then I begin to ask myself, I wonder what the world's going on here. Why is this happening? This is such bad timing, God. Really bad timing here. <laughs> and then the Lord came and said, you're all right, aren't you? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I said, yeah, I'm doing good. He goes, then you ought to be praising the Lord. Uh, that's your bad. Don't be asking me what happened. You need to be saying, thank you, Jesus. I'm all right. Yeah, and so anyway, let's take a look at this other son. So we know the first son comes home. And don't forget, Job, he does get blessed. The, 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 end, the latter end of him was greater than the beginning. I just want to throw that out there. He was double blessed for his over. But as a, when, the, when a son comes home, there's another son. Let's read what happens. The father's already embraced this first son. He's forgiven him. He's poured out the blessing. They're throwing a party, a celebration. Now his elder son was in the field working. Thank God. And he came and drew nigh to the house, and he heard music and dancing. And he called one of his servants and asked what these things meant. And they said, Thy brother has come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. Can you say amen? Yeah. Praise God, he's safe and sound. And so he, it says he shouted and praised God and got involved in the, in the worship that day. No, it says he was angry. Let's read it. 
It says, no, he was angry. Verse 28, Luke 15, 28. He was angry and he would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. Here, here's the love of the father. Here's the father again. Going another extra mile for somebody else. That's the love of God. He entreated him and he, and he answered and said to his father, Lord, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son has come, which has devoured thy living with harlots, and thou hast killed him, the fatted calf. So in other words, he had already pretty well judged his brother, wrote his brother off, and now he's upset that the brother has repented and come home, and he's, he's a little bit upset because he thinks, well, dad never threw anything like that for me. He never, he never, and everything in that kingdom was also at his disposal, every blessing. And the Bible tells us, and so it says, as soon as thy sons come, you do, which had devoured your living with the harlots, thou hast cast him for, uh, from fatted calf, you've killed him the fatted calf, and he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and are all that I have is thine. It was me that we should make merry, and be glad. For this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, was lost, and is found. And there was the come to Jesus moment, if you will, for the other son. A test. Uh, all of us have a test. All of us in our Christian life, I promise you, the next two years, five years, ten years, as long as you're alive, you will go through different tests, different situations, different trials, different uh, opportunities to either do the right thing or to make the wrong decision. You'll, you'll keep getting this opportunity. It just doesn't go away. It isn't, you know, and, and I even think until you get it right, it just keeps coming back. <laughs> until you get it fixed, it doesn't really leave. Until you can overcome it, praise the Lord. You are an overcomer, by the way, to the blood of Jesus Christ. You have the power to make the right decisions to serve the Lord and to go all the way. Now, at the same time, people are watching on the line as well, and the folks that are here as well. I begin to think about what happens if the man who did go away never comes back. What if he never comes back? The younger son who took everything he had, he thought it was his, wasted it and went out into the world, went out in there, riotous living, wasted it out there. What if he doesn't come to himself? What if he stays in the hog pen? What if it just gets worse and worse? What if he never returns? Is he still going to be able to have the joy in the kingdom? Now, a lot of people would preach, yes, he will. Tons of them would preach, yes, he will. And they're wrong. If they read their Bible, it shows you they're so unscripturally, unbiblically trained. They read Genesis to Revelation and can't understand that if you die in your sin, where I'm at, you cannot come. And the Bible tells us that be sure your sin will find you out, and the soul that sinneth shall surely die. So there comes a moment where, what if the boy stays in the hog pen? What if he never comes back to the father? See, the father is waiting for him every day, hoping he's coming, praying that he will. But what if he don't? What if he don't? What if he's like the rich man who we preached two weeks ago, Dad did, and how the rich man saw Lazarus at his gate every day, but never did anything. And maybe that wasn't his sin as much as he just never turned to God. But when he died, the Bible said in hell he was buried, and he lifted up his eyes in torment, being tormented in a flame. What happens? Well, Pastor, it'll be all right. No, listen, ask this young man. If it was all right, he should have stayed there. It was, if it was so good in the hog pen, why didn't he stay? Why didn't he just keep watering? Why didn't he just enjoy it? Why didn't he just die in it? It'll be all right. It's not all right. Can somebody help me? Please? You don't want to die without Christ in your life. You don't want to be in a situation where God is not in your life. You don't want to come to the judgment seat of God when the Bible says, and I saw a throne, a great white throne, and I saw the dead, both small and great, stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You don't want to go there without having given your life to God fully. Can you say amen? amen. amen. So that's one of the reasons Heidi's Rachel Sart and the the prayer we do on Thursday nights uh, and pray for people. People will offer up their children's names and their grandchildren's names. 
is because many kids have come through the doors of our ministries, <coughs> whether at Blue Sea or uh, all the different places that either I've been preaching or Dad's been preaching. And we've seen kids in Sunday school and youth groups and vacation Bible school. We've, we've, you know, we've been around a ton of people in this community. It's an unbelievable number. And some of them are serving the Lord right now. They attend other churches maybe doing great. Praise God. But some haven't. Some are still out there. Some have went outside the borders. And they're still in danger. If there was no danger for the little lamb, then why would the Lord leave the 99 and go get the one? If the one was okay anyway, just leave it out there in the thicket. It would be alright, Pastor. Let it just hang out there on its own without a shepherd. It will be okay. No, it won't be okay. No, it won't be okay. And so here we go. We're, we're in a situation where we either have to get things right with God or we're, or we're not going to make it. We have to serve the Lord with a pureness of heart. You're not perfect. None of us are. But we are forgiven by the blood of Jesus. But, all right? But we're made perfect through the blood of the Lamb. Paul said, it's not I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. Praise the Lord. For if my righteousness, it would be filthy rats. I mean, our righteousness is nothing. I was just talking to Pastor Leonard here just a minute ago. So they were singing that song. I have nothing to offer but myself. I, I think it might have been trying to sing that song. All, all you got is yourself to offer. That's all you got anyway. Anything else you got is useless, worthless. God doesn't need it. What he needs is you. Everything about you. Praise the Lord. I can shout. Woo! Praise God. That's all I got to offer. Praise the Lord. No wonder Peter and John on the day uh, down there at the gate called Beautiful uh, said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise and walk. Praise the Lord. I don't have anything I can give you outside of the power of God and the glory of God and the joy of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. It feels good to be saved. It feels great to be born again. It feels wonderful to have the shout, the shout, the shout of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rise against you, you shall condemn in judgment. Praise the Lord. God said, I'll be your rearward. I put on the whole armor of God. Praise the Lord. Why do you need to wear armor? Because you're in a battle. Praise God. <laughs> you may not like being in a spiritual war, but every one of us are in it. Praise the Lord. It's time that we step up to the plate, mature in our Christian life, and start taking on every challenge in the name of Jesus, and we shall overcome it in Jesus' name. People all over the community and all over the world who are counting on the church, counting on us, counting that we will keep shining the light. If we don't do it, who will? If we can't do it, who will? If we won't do it, who will? One thing's for sure. God has a remnant. They will. Praise God. You can be a part of the remnant. You can be a part of the remnant. In Jesus' name.